Welcome to Formation, a weekly conversation for followers of Jesus. I am Kara Watts, and I am with Renee Hoke and Shannon Moore. And we are going to start a new short little series that I am grateful that you all agreed to help me out with. I'm excited about it. Yeah. um, Our children will be experiencing um, what we are calling Kids Adventure Camp and Mission VBS. Formerly known as? Formerly known as VBS or Vacation Bible School. So um, kids these days and families are very accustomed to going to camps all summer long. And so um, changing some of our language to fit that a little bit more. Um, This is the first year that we've tried that. And so um, they will be doing VBS, or they will have done VBS um, by the time time that you hear this. Um, But we wanted to just share a little bit about what our children are learning and why they're learning it and the importance of of what we're doing and the importance of a church community that supports and cares about kids in a way that helps their faith formation um, so that they can do this. And so our theme for our Kids Adventure Camp is... Uh, peace works, two words, peace and works, and um, and what we learn from this is that peace actually does work, and how, how does that happen? And so when we chose this curriculum, it was really just before all the really incredibly divisive things started happening in our nation, um, and that has just continued as we have con- continued to plan and prepare, um, and so I am hopeful that our kids will experience and will have experienced some really um, important opportunities to hear what words such as aloha, ubuntu, shalom, agape, and si se puede. Um, those are very our words international. For the yes, um, and very um, intent upon starting with welcome and community, uh, talking about reconciliation and shalom, peace, um, agape love, that love that God gives to all of us without mm-hmm. question, um, and finishing with si se puede, the idea of yes, we can. We can step into this idea of peace, and we can work to make the world a better place. And it is work. It is work, um, and with, you know, undergirded by by scripture and um, just Christ's courageous love that transforms lives and that kids can share. They don't have to wait until they're grown-ups and have all the answers, because the little secret is when they're grown-ups, they're not going to have they're all the not going to have the answers. <laughs> and, and don't you think, where peace is concerned, the children are good teachers I do. of peace and reconciliation? I think I. I think I, there are ways yeah. that they witness to us, right, about that, watching that, and just the way in which they view the world and the wonder and and the ways they question. Well, why can't that be okay? Why can't that be peaceful? Right, and I, I'm always amazed. I think. This might, might have been what you were alluding to as well, Renee, just how quickly children can overcome an argument and just get on back to the the thing that they were playing before. And I very specifically as a child remember learning how to hold a grudge from the adults around me mm-hmm. for a and wrong. And you got to be really good at it. You practiced it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm real good at that. <laughs> Well, our first day that we're going to talk about the scripture um, is from the Gospel of Luke. We are getting to know Luke pretty well, yeah. but it's a it's a passage that we haven't talked about a whole lot. And and this is the scripture passage that we'll talk about when um, our kids are learning about aloha, that idea of welcome, and that aloha is goodbye, welcome, love. It's all of those things at once, as well as Ubuntu. So. Um, the African idea of embracing um, community and interdependence and relying on this unity that a community creates. So aloha is Hawaiian, mm-hmm. right? Uh-huh. And you said that was welcome, goodbye, mm-hmm. love. Ubuntu is African? Mm-hmm. And this commu- community, community. Okay. this idea of, sure I... of all being together. And so, in my mind. And, and so, so is aloha kind of like high? I think it's high. Well, yeah. but you wouldn't say hi as you're leaving somebody. I think it's both, though. But they do. But in Hawaii, hello and they goodbye. Do. Yes. Welcome and love. Yes. I think it's all of those things. That's a big, a... expansive word. Yeah. yeah. We don't have anything that big, do mm-hmm. we? No. Nope. We really don't. So that's important. Howdy's pretty big. <laughs> but you wouldn't say it when you were leaving. <laughs> so I think uh, this is, it's a good thing for us to recognize yes. that other people have different yeah. languages that encompass things that ours. Yeah. does not. So, right. good. Yeah. Um, so, our scripture, Luke 14, 
verses 15 through 24. I invite you to grab your Bible and read along as long as you're not driving. Um, and so if, Renee, if you will start us off by reading verses 15 through 17. I will do that. Luke chapter 14, right? Mm-hmm. On the right chapter. Okay. Beginning with verse 15. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to Jesus, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. Let me think about that. So far, so good. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Except for the slave part. Except for the slave part. Mm -hmm. That that aspect is hard throughout. But to get everything ready and go to the people Mm -hmm. who were invited... Yeah. Everything's ready. And do you think that's the way that it was done at this time that that's, you know, people were waiting until they go, okay, it's ready now. Have you ever <laughs> been to a party <laughs> where nothing was ready, where you thought you were arriving just as the meal would begin and you it was not. a long time before anybody ate? I have, I have experienced that. I have been the hostess when that <laughs> happened. <laughs> Once on Thanksgiving. Oh, oh my no. gosh. People waited for hours, not just because of me, but there were some complications in the kitchen. <laughs> As often happens at a family. It meal. does. It does. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that um, in reading some of this and what we'll talk about is that in this passage, uh, the table is there. And how many times we see Jesus walking, you know, to a table, from a table, around a table, mm-hmm. you know throwing over it like a table like <laughs> the table is such a prominent thing and for us as church disciples of Christ the table is such a powerful thing but mm-hmm. to him I love the way the story unfolds that it starts as this very lovely situation everything's ready come for everything is ready now but that's not exactly what ends up happening so shall I continue next, yes I'm going to start at verse 18 but they all alike began to make excuses The first said, I've just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five uh, yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to the master, his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there's still room. That's a a very efficient servant. (laughs) Think about how hard the second assignment was to just go round up some people. Yeah, and, and all the excuses. That's very disappointing. It is. It is, but it feels so real life. It does. I, I got to admit, sometimes I'm the excuse maker. I'm an introvert, so sometimes the thought of... You don't want to go to the big banquet. I don't want to go to the big banquet. There's too many people. You just want to have a sack lunch at home. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that sounds lovely. <laughs> but I, I do think, I mean, in all of these, to me, all, they all seem pretty plausible. Like, nothing sounds completely outlandish. Well, if I were the mass, if I were the person throwing the party, yes. um, the I've just bought a field. I'd be like, mm, you could do that tomorrow. <laughs> um, and also the oxen. Now I just got married. That's that's an, that's a solid excuse. Yeah, but there are all but those excuses. other things could happen the next day. I think so. You think so? Visiting your land or or brushing your, your oxen. oxen up. Yep. Um, but I guess the point isn't... I think there's rejection in there. Yes. Rejection of the mm-hmm. host. Of, mm. And of not um, being aware of all the preparation that's gone into creating this event. This place to gather around And then table. just, yeah, I'm not coming. Sorry. Yeah. Well, in verses 23 and 24, we hear the conclusion of this parable. Uh, Then the master said to the servant, go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who are invited will taste my dinner. There's a grudge for you. 
That's isn't it? A little I'm, bit of a one? Oh yeah, I would say that. Being our grudge expert here at the table. <laughs> so very often in parables, mm-hmm. you know, we wanna assign roles. Uh, who does this person represent? Who does that person represent? Um, very often the you know, if there's you know, a master or a man or whatever, it's tends to people tend to see that as God. Do you do you think God is represented by this character in this parable? I don't know. Is my answer based on the ending? I would say it's not God. Yeah, I think the end is pretty because it, there's a rough. little bit of because of the grudge part. Yeah, <laughs> and the anger. The anger and the you grudge. Will never eat my dinner. <laughs> that wouldn't. Those wouldn't be good words of institution yeah. to include that. And so then the question, and, and thinking about this in terms of this idea of aloha and welcome and this radical hospitality i mean the the person throwing the party started out with a pretty specific list of people mm-hmm. that were to come mm-hmm. and they all said no and instead of just saying forget it we're not going to do it what we see instead is this this maybe willingness to look to those who maybe would never have been invited in the first place. But as it's laid out here, they were second choices. They were choices. second. They are second choices. And then there were mm-hmm. some additional spaces that would have been the third right. choices. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. so but what I does think that it's, mean? I, to me, it just seems like once you get a taste of, hus- of expressing hospitality, like, well, why didn't I do this before? We'll go get some more. You know, there's, a, there's plenty of room. I... I wish I had known that it was so easy to fill the house. And I don't have to spend a lot of energy on people who don't want to be here when there are, there are so many who would welcome the invitation. And look how easy it is. And I didn't even know that it's so easy to So the to man be or woman who gave the great dinner was learning. Yes. As this story goes on. Mm-hmm. I learned about... Um, different ways to gather around the table when we moved away from Texas and couldn't afford to go back home for both Christmas and Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So Thanksgiving would be with some friends in Illinois who invited us to come over. That was a, I think that was the first time, other than going home with my college roommate and having a meal, it was the first time that... um, I experienced a different configuration around the table for a very uh, familiar ritual to be at a different table with people I wasn't even related to. So I I do think we learn to to love in ever larger circles if we're open to that. Right. Janet Walton explains that a meal then and now is a ritual that embodies memory, imagination, power, encounter, freedom, relationships, presence, and blessing. It's an action in which the community celebrates its covenant connection with God and with each other. And so then the question becomes, if this is true, then how can it be so that we have meals in our homes and churches that do not represent the full tapestry of our humanity? Which I think is what you're speaking to, having to step outside of our known ritual in order to experience that in a really different way which seems like a hard thing to do and maybe this parable is telling us is not quite as hard as we thought there's room for more yeah (laughs) come on that's hard what i think i hear in aloha is enough is someone seeking to know those people i mean that it's a welcome Mm -hmm. if it's if it's also about love and what was the what were the four words? Hello, goodbye, love, and welcome. welcome. And welcome. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's a way sometimes that we can, like the idea mm-hmm. of a radical welcome, but it's a lot of work, right? right? To know people. I think about knowing someone as you invite them to the table, knowing them enough to know what they would like to eat, to know what their practices are, for them to recognize something familiar as you sit down. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a lot of work well, to know I- people like that. Yeah, and I think that that's why the, the Ubuntu, the community and that interdependence on one another, mm-hmm. that that fits so nicely with this. And so when we're working with the kids, 
we'll be talking about, you know, the body of Christ when we talk about the community and all of that. But I think it fits so nicely because we can welcome people, but if we don't create community with with those individuals and create a place of of safety and acceptance and include like all of those things mm-hmm. and learn who can eat what and can't, right. then I think we're we're missing out. Then the aloha doesn't go far enough. In my that'll be a great lesson for kids though, because kids so. get that attention to other. Don't you think? I think so. I see that. I think that we're born with that, and then mm-hmm. we just um, kind of don't put out the effort after a while. But it's so hard. Well, and yeah. in the curriculum that you're using, one of the things that stood out to me was how often children are relegated to a separate oh. table. That you know, and one day we had to you'll get, get on the porch. You'll get to be at the real table only because somebody dies. <laughs> <laughs> when I realized the only way that I could get into the main table was this, the only way that a seat would become available was really tragic. I'm like, well, I guess I'll just stay on the porch. Yeah. And I don't, I don't ever remember that experience when I was growing up. Well, our table had you had a bigger table. I well, guess. it had leaves that you could add, and I always mm-hmm. loved helping mom make the table bigger. I thought that that was such a cool. Mm-hmm. thing that's She'd nice stand on one end and i'd you know I'd, we'd pull it apart and you'd go put the leaves in and then you had this huge table where there had been a small one i loved doing that i haven't thought and about there was that excitement in, a long time. in that right because yeah. you yeah. knew this something special was about yeah. to happen when when uh, i was able to buy furniture for the first time um no children newly married and i bought specifically you know went to bat to say we have to purchase now all of the leaves that are available for this particular table because one day it will be a big table and I didn't want to have (laughs) you know I still have that table in my home and I still have those leaves sitting in the garage because we don't often need them because my family is not as huge, I guess, as I can imagine. <laughs> you were ambitious. <laughs> it was very ambitious. But, but we have pulled them out. It's mm-hmm. different so times. Shannon and, and I'll people. come over. So you can come over. And, and yeah, we can. Well, we need to invite a lot of people. I, there are a lot of you leaves. There are a lot of leaves in the garage. <laughs> How many would it seed if you put all the leaves in? Uh, probably 16. I was going to uh, guess 16. Yeah, I thought it would fit 16. That's a, big table. That's a lot. So, um, it's, but it's a big table, but it's, it, it would allow, I always wanted the idea that, you know, we wouldn't have to continue to have the card table yep. someplace else. That's a great, Unity. So, yeah. I think uh, this will be an important lesson for the I, children. I think so. I, I, I'm excited. excited. And but maybe the adults goes. who are helping. I think even better for the adults who are helping. Yep. It always Fantastic. turns out like that. So thank you and um, aloha, will, aloha, <laughs> aloha. Abunda. We'll do. We will um, follow up on one more of these lessons that we're covering in our PeaceWorks uh, Kids Adventure Camp next week. Aloha. Mm-hmm.